John Carpenter, you may not be on tons of top 100 movie lists out there, but you certainly are popular on our list. We're talking about Halloween, which is number 72 of our 100 best movies of all time. This is the original starring Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, this is her debut mm -hmm. in any film, and she, of course, plays the babysitter who has a really bad night. Now, what John Carpenter does right here is a lot of different things. He, of course, was an independent movie producer yeah. at the time, so he's one of these guys, like George Lucas, that controlled every aspect of the film. In fact, he even wrote the score for this film, which lot. is so memorable. Yeah. This guy is a true renaissance man, but what he does best here is he captures the rhythms of small town life. I mean, yep. you get this authentic Halloween sense. You get the leaves falling on the streets. You get the kids walking home from school. You get night falling. You get this creeping sense of dread. And of course, this guy from a local insane asylum who turns out to be named Michael Myers and he has a Bill Shatner mask. Yeah. He decides to terrorize the neighborhood, specifically this one house in particular, and I won't spoil why he decides to pick that one house, but Jamie Lee Curtis proves to be more than a match for this guy who yep. is of incredible strength. <laughs> supernatural strength even. This is a movie that's filled with mystery, that's filled with dread, that's filled with moments of cringing, that's filled with moments of cheering. Yeah, and also it's Carpenter's kind of tip of the hat to Hitchcock and Psycho. I think you can certainly lift off from this film and see the echoes of Jamie Lee Curtis's character in Ripley in the Alien franchise. The Boogeyman can only come out on Halloween night, right? Right. While I'm here tonight, I'm not about to let anything happen to you. This was a really cool moment, I think, for a lot of people out there. They hadn't really seen a horror film like this that connected so globally. It was a massive, massive success. No, was one of the biggest successes in movie history totally. because it was made for like five for cents. Peanuts, yeah. And then it would go on to just rake in the dough at the box office for years. Spawned seven or eight sequels of its own. Way too many sequels. You, and then yeah. it, now it's in the reboot mode. So you know that this thing is going to be a perpetual moneymaker well, for a very long time. This is one of those time. movies that people watch annually. Yeah. Halloween, totally. you sit down, this has become part of the culture, this has become part of the rhythm of your own lives. You want that scare, it's and it stays fresh for some reason. See anything you like? Even though this was shot in the late 70s, it still feels fresh yep. and timeless, even today, well, which is a testament to how good this thing is. Because so many movies have evoked scenes and evoked the feel. I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street absolutely tips its hat to Halloween. The Scream franchise is such a big... None of these things would exist. I know, right? right? Totally. Halloween kind of set the bar and set the tone, and Curtis was fantastic in this movie. Donald, Donald Pleasance is great, great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You must be ready for him. If you don't, it's your funeral. Yeah, no, it's really a fantastic piece of work. I don't know why the film world doesn't celebrate Carpenter. the legacy of Carpenter more, because this guy has done so much good work. I mean, he's made a lot of bad he's movies, made too. made some crap. And maybe yeah. that's why. Yeah. But the hits that he has had, I mean, I would argue that his batting average is probably as good as Woody Allen's. You know? know, like he's made some good stuff. He's made some bad stuff. He's an artist. Well, and this was some of his best stuff. Halloween, we love you. We love celebrating the holiday every year with you. You are number 72 right. on our top 100 list. Keep those knitting needles handy.